Hello, everybody. This is Karamas Goes 018, and uh, just finished uploading uh, Blind Reaction to Toradora Episode 3, so this is the My Thoughts for that reaction. It's been a while since I've actually recorded that one, though. But essentially, uh, we get to see more of Ryuji's crush on Minori in this episode, and a bit of one that Tag has got on his friend. I can't remember his name. Don't know why. Then again, it's hard for me to remember names, especially when they're a freaking in a foreign language like Japanese, for example. Anyway, uh, I didn't like that Taiga was essentially beating him up because he was watching Minora, you know, running around the bases to do her home run because she got a home run. And I'm like, he's just watching her run. There's nothing perverted about it. It's not like he's focusing on, you know her behind or her chest or anything like that to show that it's perverted. He's just watching her run and thinking that she's amazing. That's it. There's nothing perverted about it. And yet she acts like he's being a lecherous teenager, essentially. Or sorry, a perverted teenager, I should say. Which he's not. He's just a guy with a crush. Anyway, apparently the rice cooker breaks, which sucks. So, instead of going to the store to buy a rice cooker, Taiga takes them out to takes him to a diner to eat. And there's actually an alternate reason for that. Minori works there part time. And that kinda surprised me and it didn't surprise me because it surprised me because earlier she was calling him a lecherous dog, uh, a perverted dog or something. And then she brings him to the place where she knows her friend is working. You're kind of doing a bit of a 180 there. You're kind of not being consistent. Anyway, we find out that she apparently she's got several part-time jobs. Which is surprising, yet I wonder why she's got the part-time jobs in the first place, because apparently, according to Ryuji, she shouldn't need any money. Maybe she's just saving just so she can have the money just in case? I don't know. But, anyway, uh... What else? <sighs> apparently, they also find out that uh, Minori is working part-time as a, at a store, a convenience store, I think. It's either a regular store or a convenience store, I can't even remember. I think it's a convenience store, and the guy is wanting part-time workers on, like, the weekends, essentially. And Ryuji signs both him and Taiga up, even though she doesn't want to. And he obviously does it because he wants to obviously be around Minori some more, because he obviously can't be around her very often. And like I said, I don't think it's anything perverted, I think he just wants to, hang just wants to spend time with her. And there's nothing wrong with that. And we actually find out in this episode that Taiga can't run a bike, ride a bike. Which makes sense since her parents are apparently rich. And I'm guessing that they had never bought her a bike. I bet they bought her more expensive ways of getting around. Growing up, anyway. At least until she, start, at least until she started being, you know, how she is now. And then they ended up sending her to that apartment to live. And instead of admitting that she can't ride a bike, she just puts the things on the bike and just pushes the bike along. Which, she's still getting exercise with that, that, doing that, but still. And, bad thing, Ryuji and Minori end up getting locked in the storeroom for who knows how long. And he actually finds out that she's so cheerful because she's facing any fears that she has, which is a nice way to look about, nice way to go about doing that. And he gets to obviously spend some more time with her, which is good. He doesn't have to worry about Tiger getting in the way and calling him a perverted dog. And speaking of Taiga, she ends up running into his best friend. I can't remember what his name is. If anybody can remind me what his name is, that'd be great. But she ends up running into him, and apparently he's been keeping tabs on her, I think, the last year. 
the last school year, they was keeping tabs on her, and he knew that she couldn't ride a bike. And, obviously, that made her blush, and now she's trying to learn how to ride a bike once he, you know, walked off. She tries to ride the bike, and she ends up falling over several times. Which, it's gonna happen when you're trying to ride a bike. You're bound to fall down a few times, trying to get the balance and everything, and then trying to stop. <laughs> and trying to turn, you end up falling over a few times. And, obviously, she's getting frustrated. I don't remember if she ever ended up delivering the, the, I think it was, she had to deliver like three cases of beer or something. I don't know if she ever ended up delivering them or not. I assume she did because it didn't look like she had dropped the boxes when she fell over. So, I don't know. And he ends up, she ends up going to look for Ryuji and Minori because they're essentially missing from the store. And she finds them and ends up getting trapped in the storeroom with them because she fell through the window and the ladder fell onto the ground, so they can't get it. And that's essentially how the episode ends. Now, I like Ryuji. He's a, he seems like a nice guy, and his crush on Minori isn't anything perverted. It seems more, I guess, romantic. Or essentially as, a, as romantic as a crush can be. But I don't think he has any, any perverted thoughts towards her. Which, I don't know. I don't know what that's... I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. But, yeah. <sighs> we got to see more of Minori in this episode and how she sees things, which is good. Anyway, uh, that's about all I have to say on this episode. If you guys have any of your, any of your own comments on this episode, feel free to put them in the comment section and I will add my own input to it. Because I like interacting with you guys, and the comment section is a good way of doing so if you're not on the Discord. Anyway, uh, that's about it, and I will see everybody next time.